we're going to now move from art to music. We touched on it briefly yesterday, uh, but as you know, you know, Web3 has is really going on, you know, leaps and bounds in music, uh, especially with artists and their fans. Already within such a short period of time, musicians have embraced the technology uh, to offer more inclusive and immersive fan experiences. Now, to tell us more about this and to take us through it, Matthias uh, Tengblad, CEO and co-founder of Corite, it's a, a, plat a platform that is built on blockchain. He will be now taking the stage with his guest. Matthias, over to you. Hello, guys. Lovely crowd. Yeah, we're super happy to be here. Uh, this little fire chat talk will be about uh, Web3 and hitting the hitting the Web3 note, which is about how this Web3 uh, vision will impact the music industry and artists within it. And uh, as you all know, Web3 is this concept of uh, the next iteration of internet, uh, which includes concepts like blockchain technology, decentralization, token economics, metaverses, etc. It's pretty wide and it's pretty sort of challenging in the thought, but it's really, really inspiring. And I think in this chat, we'll try to dig with a couple of really prominent guests here to dig into what it means for the music industry. So uh, I'm happy to introduce, I think we can introduce uh, ourselves, I guess, uh, but uh, Geronimo, please start. Thank you. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. I'm Geronimo, and I'm the CEO of uh, Deezer, the music streaming platform. Hi everyone, nice to, uh, to meet you. My name is Panos Panay and I'm president of the, of the Recording Academy, which is the organization that presents the, uh, the Grammy Awards. And I'm Matthias Tengblad and I'm running a startup called CoWrite, uh, which is about letting fans and artists connect in a much more intense way. Uh, and we're doing it on the BNB chain, so we're in this Web3 space. Uh, I think the first discussion subject, let's talk about, yeah, on a general note, what do you think? Web3 and the music industry, how will it impact artists in the future? Well, I think all technological advances uh, open up a door for a lot of new things. Uh, the same way that uh, um, basically the music industry changed when uh, music could be recorded and then people could actually buy a disc back in like, prior century. Then you had the internet revolution, which wasn't great at the beginning for music, uh, but eventually it was. And open up a whole new door now for streaming. People have access to the whole music catalog uh, and, and consume music more than ever before. Then you have video, you have a, a lot of really opportunities for artists to express their music, to connect to their fans. And I think that Web3 technology will open a lot of additional opportunities for artists to express themselves, to create whole new experiences, to connect with fans in a new way, and to basically take music to the next level. I think technology is just simply allowing artists to create, giving more layers of things that you can do with music, and music has always been part of our life and always will. So I think we should always embrace technology and see what additional doors, what additional opportunities that brings to us, and I think there, there's plenty on, on Web3, especially when you think about the metaverse. I think it's really cool when you start in the creativity because I, I truly believe that as well. Like I normally think about like the format of the LP. Let's say there's at some time like 50, 60 years ago, they come up with this great idea of recording 45 minutes of music on a plastic piece. That became a format that has been like history in the, in the art form of music. Then came the music video in the 80s and that was like through the MTV, the most important asset in the industry. And then comes all these digital formats and whatever can come now with the Web3 is I think it comes from the artists to start with. Then guys like us will try to sort of figure out how to monetize that in the end. That will be exciting, but it's cool that you started in that angle. Yeah, and I think, actually I really like that, Geronimo. And, um, you know, if you look historically, most technologies 
it was musicians and music that helped popularize them, right? From the advent of radio to television to cable television. Um, if you think about the early social media, if it wasn't for musicians embracing Friendster and then, and then uh, MySpace, we're here talking about blockchain. If it wasn't for Napster and peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, I don't know if blockchain would have necessarily been conceived or come about. So uh, when we're looking at Web3 and, uh, and the implications, first I would say to all of you, if you want to see where the future is going, look at what musicians on the edges are doing with that technology. Um, and then to your point about creative expression and, and building on, on what you said as well, um, when uh, the first records came about, people looked at recorded music as simply borrowing from what was happening in the live world and just putting it on a piece of, um, of vinyl. And it wasn't until the 60s with the advent of multi-track recording that the Beatles came about and said, wait a minute, we don't, we don't have to necessarily recreate what's possible in a live space. We can reimagine what's possible when you record music, so we're just going to be treating it almost like painting, but with sound. So part of what um, uh, Web3 will do is not just influence the way that music is monetized or how we track the provenance of where um, uh, sounds come from or the owners of, of those files, if you will, or how fan experiences um, are being impacted, but the very nature of creativity, especially when we move away from the linearity that we are used to when we're consuming music will dramatically change the very experience of, of music. Yeah, I think, so to summarize this first area, I think it's all about the creations and the new opportunities that will come with this technology, but also you both mentioned, and I totally support that, the fan-artist relation, because is I would say, looking at the blockchain and Web3 vision about decentralized economies, etc., where people working together to create big communities and share the success, I think the music industry is probably the best fitted of all. It's always been about the guy on stage singing for the crowd below the stage, and that community and the power that sort of occurs that when that happens. And I think the fan power here is the, the, the sort of the mantra somewhere. I think the music industry basically lacked or missed the opportunity of using that power that's out there, and there's so much more to do. And you said something before, basically, yeah, you can, maybe you can, you had some idea on how much more revenue this industry actually could make if they actually utilized the fan power. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a, a, a lot of opportunities uh, to, to monetize music uh, uh, much better than we do today. Uh, coming from other industries before, I, uh, I do think that we are still in the very early stages of monetization. I think. Uh, we are giving too much music uh, uh, very cheaply at the moment, and uh, I think there's an opportunity to actually help artists uh, monetize their fandom and their art and their creativity far, far better. Uh, and I think there's a, a lot of really interesting things that come up, and obviously Web3 will be part of that, but not only. There's, there's many, many more things that we can do. So from your perspective, uh, running one of the leading streaming platforms on the globe, uh, Deezer, uh, how do you think about these things? Well, uh, we're thinking about that because we have the connection to the, uh, to the fans, and we know, we know their behavior. We see the data, so we know who is super fan, uh, and the thing is that that data stays with us, and we don't share really that data today with the labels of with the artist itself, and that's something that I would really like to change. Uh, I would like to become a platform that starts connecting artists to fans, start sharing data uh, with the artist about their fans, who they are, like what they consume, what they, what they like. Uh, and I think that will be the beginning that will trigger a lot of uh, new opportunities. And kind of start sharing kind of what you said. It's music is about communities. Uh, it has always been. And right now, the experience is more you consuming uh, music to your device. So it's technology to person without really the whole concept of communities, and, and we have to do that, and have more transparency, I think, and that's one of the things that makes uh, Web3 so popular, decentralization and transparency. I think the, the whole industry will benefit a lot for sharing more, being more transparent, uh, and, and, that will, uh, and that's something that we would like to be at the forefront of change. And, and 
as the concept of identity is evolving um, away from one where all the different platforms own, own our identity to one where we own our identity, then for me, that can dramatically change the way that I, as a fan of music, is able to connect uh, with my favorite artists because I'm the same person who bought a ticket for your show as I am the one that streamed uh, your song, as I am the one who watched this particular documentary about you on, on the streaming service, on and on, right? And I feel that right now, when it comes to understanding who the audiences are, the music industry is behind most other industries precisely because we have multiple identities depending on what we're consuming. But because in, the music industry is so malleable, right? So music is one of the few things that you can consume in so many different ways, both passively or proactively, in so many different mediums. It can be live, it can be digital, it can be in a form of audiovisual. Music is everywhere, it's truly embedded everywhere. It is very difficult right now for us to identify that fan that they're the exact same person. So part of what excites me is the idea of reimagining what my digital identity is and one that is tied back to me, right? The whole idea of a self-sovereign identity. And that's a really good perspective. I think I've been with the music industry for quite a while. I was setting up the commercials in the, in the Universal Music, the big label in Scandinavia for several years during a very specific time when Spotify was launching and streaming was introduced. So I was basically running around preaching the streaming economy for, for the industry. And we learned a lot of things, but I think one thing that we missed out during that period of time was the fan relation. Even though everybody was thinking about it, nobody really did it. And I think uh, what you both are saying, I think looking at the, at the big, the normal problems that the industry trying to solve for artists is like find the artists that are, have the talent and the ambition enough, support them with money and marketing support, and then make money out of the business and the products that they do. And that's basically what the industry trying to do. And I think with this technology, there will be new ways to sort of challenge the old ways of doing these things. So you, you doesn't necessarily have to have exactly the same value chain. You can have, uh, instead of, of raising funds as an artist go into a record label, you can raising funds by going to your audience out there and do a crowdfunding activity and share the revenues with the ones that helps you with the money, but also with the activity. So if you manage to sort of engage these guys and work with you, uh, all the people that love you will help you take you to the next level, cut through the noise, and then stand a chance in this crazy competition, which is also pretty cool. It's 70,000 songs released on services like Deezer every single day today. So it's not an easy game there to sort of cut through that. But I think all these things are really interesting. But I, I want to get back to what you started in the creativity, because I think you said a really nice color on that. Going into this what's called metaverse. Uh, do you have any kind of visions on what that might be when this new Beatles artist come up, how to sort of paint the picture in the metaverse in the future? Well, something we were talking about right before we, uh, we came on stage, which is where a lot of the interesting conversations tend to happen, um, is the idea that the industry is going to have to reimagine the way that it connects with fans. Right now, in the music space, we're used to... Uh, almost like the in and out model, right? You go into a concert and then it's done. You stream your favorite song and then it's done. What we don't have that is present in the gaming industry is the idea of a perpetual, ongoing, 24-7 relationship uh, with a particular musical experience that you can actually go in or go out, but you can engage with it on a 24-7 basis. Part of what's gonna activate a, a true metaverse is the idea that these experiences have to be perpetual, they have to be interoperable, they have to be transferable from platform to platform or world to world, game to game. Um, so I think it, it, it will take a reimagination ultimately of what music creativity is. Also as we're beginning to see the advent of new type of audio experiences, such as spatial audio and true 3D sound. What might that look like and how will that change the whole way that we experience a song? You know, we, we're all used to experiencing a song more or less in a stereo environment. What would it be like to be in 
a song? Uh, what would it be like if you're experiencing music in a non-linear way, but your relationship to that sound changes based on where you are, or perhaps you're contributing part of it, and then you're resharing it to somewhere else. You know, we talked about Sgt. Pepper and the Beatles. What if you added something to it? What if you create your own Sgt. Pepper, right? So I think that a lot of these experiences are going to change. But part of what's exciting with this technology, and in particular with this advent of Web3, is that not just these immersive environments or these perpetual experiences, but the very nature of how you can incentivize fans, or even the blurring of the lines between who's a fan, who's a creator, who's an owner. All these, what, what was once three distinct, distinct roles, right? You had the owner of a copyright, you had a creator, and then you have a fan. Now all those three are becoming more of the same, right? A fan can be an owner and can be a co-creator. An artist can be an owner and, um, and a consumer at the same time, and on and on. I think that's going to recalibrate uh, the way that we, um, uh, we see the world in the music space. There's a really interesting thought there as well, because uh, also with the younger generations, everyone in a way is a creator just by posting things on social media. And I think people expect now to be part of it. And in a, in a fully digital environment and digital world, the artists can engage with the fans and have them co-create, use, like, fans don't want to be just passive listeners. They don't want to sit and just listen. They want to be part of it. They want to participate. They want to either jump in and live in, in a world inspired by the song or by the video. Like, instead of watching the video clip, you could just immerse yourself into the video clip and walk around and be part of it. Uh, you can use the music and the song to create your own versions, to m move it around, share it with other people. And I think like involving the fans, making them be part of that experience is something that is just not there yet today. And I can totally see that uh, happening relatively soon. And it would be amazing once you actually engage with the, bring the, so bring I was the audience in. So I was thinking to ask you about like if you have seen like examples of what everything we're talking about but when you said what you said just said I just came up with one on my own because we we did this amazing project this summer together with the EDM uh, producer and artist Alan Walker Norwegian British guy who has some massive hits in history but he's primarily been very very good in building his fan relations so he joined our platform this spring and we did a con uh, product together where it was actually basically what you said so he created his song unity which is produced by hundreds of his fans so he as a producer he he asked the fans to contribute with different parts of the song he put it together he released it like uh, like a year ago on youtube and it spread out like crazy so it has 65 million views or something like that and then we wanted to commercialize it uh, to the next level so then we invited all these guys plus everybody else to, to actually invest a tiny piece of money uh, into the song, which was, we, max, we set the limit on the investment on $10 to have as many people as possible. So in just a few hours, we got like 3,000 people to put that money in, and then all of a sudden, everybody owned it as well. So we put it out, uh, and now only like four months after, we reached like the payback levels. Now everybody's making money from that song. And next level will be, of course, to try to engage these guys and doing more stuff around it. So I think these are the things. It's happening now from artists that are creative and uh, platforms and other people in the industry that want like help them along. So do you have any other like examples of the things you have seen that are really inspiring right now? Uh, well, I think l less so in the metaverse, but I think also live streaming is starting to be uh, bigger and bigger. And I think that's just a, a first step. First you do live stream and then later on you will do a, a full um, um, experience in the metaverse. Uh, but even then, it allows you to reach much bigger audiences. So when you do an event, you, you only are limited to the capacity of the venue and the location. Once you do it virtually, then basically you have the whole world and you can find, find fans everywhere. Uh, and I see that uh, live streaming is becoming a more, uh, more and more uh, popular, more way to actually reach larger audiences. And obviously that you can take it to the next level once you go to the metaverse. Yeah, and I, I mean, building on Geronimo's point, I think that, um, you know, we're, we're so used to experiencing 
music in a particular way that, um, you know, a true metaverse experience can fundamentally kind of like reorient what our expectations are in terms of even our own participation within that, that experience, right? Or if you think of an artist, right now they're very much constrained in terms of their ability to go out there and engage with audiences because they can only be at one place at any particular time. Um, and they can only do it for only so long unless you're the Rolling Stones and I guess you can, you know, play satisfaction until you're 80. But what would it be like if you experience the Stones, but they're their 20-year-old selves and they don't have to be their 80-year-old selves, right? Or what would it be like if you can have a much more up close and personal experience of a particular um, particular live show, uh, or you could choose the audience in which you decide to, you know, go and parachute in. Um, so for me, again, it's it's the whole idea of reorienting our expectations of what's of what's possible, um, and also the way that we're participating in that economy. Uh, so it's not just about creating a new platforms, it's about creating a completely different economy for the industry than the one that exists right now. So one more subject that I thought a lot about uh, recently, and I think you, you mentioned both that this will open up for new types of revenue streams. One is, of course, looking at the NFT space and the previous talk here is about the art and the digital art and the merchandise which is around music. And I think merchandise and metaverse is in particular interesting. We talked a lot about esports before the show here, how old guys like myself didn't really understand that to begin with, but when working with it in a couple of years, realized, wow, this is really happening. Same goes for digital merchandise, I think. Looking at your the kids right now when they're raffle about sneakers and they pay a shit ton of money to get the new Nike with a, with a twist. Imagine if you spent eight hours a day in a metaverse, of course you want to express yourself with cool stuff in that environment. So what's your thought about like digital merchandise and uh, from a music perspective? Well, I, I worked in gaming for quite a while and I've, I've seen it and I, I actually have seen people spend a lot more money on the digital world than in the real world. Uh, and I think that's definitely going to happen. And, uh, and in, in music in particular, merchandising is a big thing. And uh, in the digital world, could be even bigger. Uh, and you see it now with vinyls. The vinyl sales are going up and up. And most of those vinyls are sold to people that don't have a player. Like, it's just purely for decoration because they're cool and it's just like merchandising, pretty much. Uh, and, and the same will happen in the virtual world. I mean, just to put in perspective, the entire recorded industry, recording industry, is about a $30 billion business, which is great because it's, it's up from about 10 from just a few years ago, so it's, it's great to see it growing back again. But the collectible space, the digital collectible space, last year was over 50 billion. And we're just the beginning of this. Now, what happens when you marry these industries, right? And even within the Grammys, we experimented this year with a presence on Roblox. And the numbers are staggering. I mean, we only did a, a very small activation with a couple of artists meet, meet and greets and some uh, virtual live carpet experiences, red carpet experiences. And then we had an artist, Camilo, do, I think, three, three songs. And we had three million people uh, attended versus nine million people that watched the broadcast on CBS in America, right? So which has been, right up until now, the, the bread and butter of, of, of the academy. But things are only constructed based on the available technologies of the day, right? So if you were recreating the Grammy Awards today, would you take it on a broadcast television? Chances are no, you would do it somewhere totally different, right? And we're often not conscious of how the formats of our entertainment experiences are directly uh, byproducts of the mediums through which we experience them, right? So, um, if you think about any show, any, any award show, it only has the format that it has because award shows made money by packaging audiences through a broadcast network and then you get paid a license fee from the aggregate advertisers they're selling. Yeah, so we will see the Grammy Awards in the metaverse in the near future. You most definitely will. Yeah. <laughs>
right? And maybe awards are not about like three and a half hours of watching them mindlessly. Maybe they happen over the course of 365 days a year where you're offering niche categories to different audiences, right? Um, so to me, that's what excites me, that again, we're going to see whole new experiences, whole new economies, whole new audiences, whole new creators coming into the market. So, Jeronimo, what's your takeaway thought from this session and, and uh, working for Deezer within this space, uh, talking about Web3? Well, I think it's actually a fascinating time uh, to, to be in the industry because <clears throat> the industry has recovered massively. Uh, it's now booming and growing again. People are paying for, for music, and now we have whole new technologies that will open up doors to do many more things that we couldn't do before. So the industry is in a healthy place, and on top of that, we have technology now that will give us more things. And I think the, the last years also taught us not to be afraid of technology. You cannot, you cannot stop technological progress. So you have to embrace it. It's going to happen whether you like it or not. And when you embrace it, good things happen, ultimately. So, uh, and I think in this, in this new uh, version of the web, uh, I think the music industry will be ready to embrace it much better than before. Uh, for, for the good sake of everyone. Thank you so much. I think that was a perfect uh, final words from, from this little chat. I uh, hope you enjoyed our little conversation. Uh, we most certainly did, and I'm, uh, I'm super happy to be here. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, let's go to the next point. Thank you. Thank you.